Amen. Good morning. And for those of you online, good morning as well. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Warm welcome today as we gather for worship. You can start saying goodbye to the wise men. Bye, wise men. They're, they're heading west, but they're not going through Jerusalem. They're going to head over down the River Jordan and up to Damascus. So, bye-bye. Lent begins soon, and our Midtown Lutheran Parish Lenten series starts with our Ash Wednesday service at noon. So if you have palm branches from last year that you've kept, um, you're welcome to bring them back by February 11th. Uh, Rachel and I will be burning them and turning them into ash for our Ash Wednesday service. And then we'll have soup supper, a soup lunch after the service on Ash Wednesday. And then our Midtown Lutheran Parish Lenten services are at noon. And then at, afterwards, there's a soup at each church. But beforehand, at 11 o'clock, the parish nurses, Mary and Sue, are going to have a, a low-impact exercise class again this year at each of those churches at 11. So you're welcome to join, join them for that if you'd like to as well. February 21st, the week after Ash Wednesday, we are hosting the midweek Lenten service at noon. So then the other churches will be hosting each week after that. Uh, today, as we gather, we're grateful for our uh, Facebook Live uh, media guy. Everybody say, hi, Cameron. You know, nobody ever gets to see you, Cameron, so good morning, everybody. This is Cameron. Everybody say, hi, Cameron. <laughs> yeah, you never saw that coming out, did you? Not a, but not surprised, are you? That's a beautiful thing. Uh, following our service today, our congregational meeting will take place downstairs. And uh, for those of you who are online, if you still need the Zoom link, an email was sent out this morning with the link. If you need it, please let us know. Um, you can contact us at the office to, to get that or just uh, shoot a phone call directly or a text directly to me and I can send it over to our intern and she can do that as well. Um, as Lent begins, we ask you to uh, keep uh, in your thoughts our office manager, JoLynn Hess, and she'll be on vacation starting Thursday until February 20th. So if you'd like to volunteer in the office, please let us know, um, because I'm also going to be out of the office starting Thursday for 10 days. So good luck, Rachel. If you'd like to volunteer in the office, some of you already have, uh, please let us know. But uh, we're grateful as we gather today um, that uh, we have uh, this wonderful civil rights trip coming up June 20th through 25th to Atlanta. Um, registration forms and our brochure are ready to be emailed out, which they will uh, possibly tomorrow. Uh, but on February 11th, we will be having around the tables and talking about the trip and the details and registration information on that day. We did apply and we did receive from uh, the state of Illinois through the Healing Illinois grant on, on racism, uh, healing racism, a $17,000 grant to pay for 17 scholarships of teenagers of color who want to attend. So uh, if you know any teenagers, uh, 13 or over, who'd like an all expense paid trip uh, to Atlanta, please let us know. Uh, we we're very, very, very grateful to be able to offer that this year uh, to, to more teenagers to attend the trip. So if you know anybody, please let us know. And then also, if you didn't grab a devotional book, these are still uh, their daily devotionals um, on the back tables. You're welcome to do so. As we gather at the font for worship today, I invite you to keep in your prayers uh, the family of Verna Jay, who had passed away earlier in January. Her memorial service will be on February 10th here at 1030. And then also please keep in your prayers uh, Linda Callahan, who has surgery tomorrow. Our prayers are with you, Linda, as you go through the surgery up in Madison. We gather and ask God's strength and mercy. So we come to worship. So please stand if you're able and turn to your bulletin as we come now. In this season of Epiphany, the light of Christ shines in the darkness, and the darkness shall never overcome the light of Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, 
wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For 
for your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save and defend us. Lord be with you. with you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will seek and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Good morning. Our first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people, you shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our next reading is Psalm 111. Um, please read responsively. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. 
Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast and forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. First chapter. Jesus and the disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent. Be silent. 
come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be seated. Jesus came to Capernaum that day on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and everybody would be seated on the floor, perhaps, and they gave him the scroll, and it doesn't say what he said, what he read, perhaps uh, from Isaiah, uh, perhaps he read from the, the Torah, uh, perhaps he read the first lesson, and uh, said, you know, if anybody speaks in God's name, and it's not his word, they're going to die. Like, oh, be careful, preacher. You don't know what you're saying. Is it's in Jesus' name or not? And so you have to make sure you say what God wants to be said. And there's a little fear and trembling as a pastor when you get up and you say that this is God's word. Because, you know, there's a little bit of me in it. I don't know. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, it, if, you know, wall's going to fall down. But Jesus gets up, reads something, and it says he read as, not like the scribes, and the, and the word scribe is uh, the word grammar we get from. It's the people who transcribed the scrolls, who knew the Hebrew, uh, who knew the language, and was more of the, the English major of the Hebrew tradition, to know every iota, um, which is the smallest Hebrew letter. I don't know if you knew this. Have you ever said, I don't give one? The iota, literally, it looks like an apostrophe. And it's the smallest Hebrew letter. Now, a scribe would know that. Like, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't really matter, does it? But the scribes knew uh, the Hebrew scripture. But Jesus reads the scroll and then it says, and then they would normally just sit down and teach. And this is how they would teach. On the level with people, you know, eye to eye. Um, and the synagogues were always small, so it wasn't like the temple, like a huge sanctuary. It was always a smaller space. Um, and he would teach them about the word, but with authority. It's, it's sort of like when my niece and I sat with the pastor preparing for my sister's funeral last Thursday. And Kamara, when he asked what passages, she said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. But I have to put off childish ways. And she said it with the authority of not knowing just what the words were, but as an almost 50-year-old niece of mine, that meant something with authority. But there's nothing like being able to speak a word in the name of Jesus that is scripture at a perfect time to be able to comfort or be comforted. Those words, as we think about Lent and enter into the Lenten season, thinking about the Psalms or other passages that are important in the faith tradition for you to consider reading again during the season of Lent. And we're going to do a little devotional where we're going to ask people, we'll send out an email, if you'd like to verbally, I mean, auditorily, you know, speak into your phone and send us passages that are important to you that we will then share online with each other. And if you want a reflection, a verbal, you know, to speak into your phone and send it as an audio file. I know I'm, I'm now I'm getting like an audio scribe right now, a cell phone scribe. You're like, what? What? The point is, if there are certain passages, to just read them and then we'll share with one another. It's in Jesus' name, literally today, that he preaches. And we don't know what he was preached, but there was somebody there sitting in the back row. It says, a man with an unclean spirit. 
in that community, sitting somewhere in that small space, there was somebody who had a dis-ease in their life, possessed by something, grief, sorrow, some say schizophrenia or epilepsy, as it has been misdiagnosed by religious folks to think that that is some type of, of uh, possession versus mental health or other issues. But something has gripped this man, and he is among the friends and family, so he is in community. He knows about Jesus. He's probably heard him preaching or speaking out in public, and he comes to synagogue. He comes to church. Because of all the places we go to when we have disease or we are possessed by something, we come to community where we seek God's word to be in and around the holy, to taste and see and to hear God's word that says, in Jesus' name, you are forgiven. This man is carrying something deep in his soul, maybe a family shame, maybe personal trauma, maybe fear, doubt, and despair. He is possessed, and he is like you and me. We are sitting among ourselves and others who are diseased in body, mind, and spirit. And he comes to seek Jesus. He comes to be healed, to be liberated, to hear a word of, of freedom. Because when he hears Jesus, he is afraid. He's afraid he's going to be rejected, destroyed, literally, the passage says. This thing will cast out something from him. This will remove something that has been built or building in his whole life that he can't let go of. Or it can't let go of him. His whole identity is not able to come clean and find freedom. This possession is deep and he seeks Jesus out and he sits there and Jesus sees him. Have you come to destroy us? Whatever these things are. And Jesus casts out the demon and sets this person free and he finds among his friends and family, the ability and the power in Jesus' name to live a new life. And isn't that what we come to church for? To be, re to be reminded that in Jesus' name, we are set free from sin, death, and the grave. We are set free from anything that possesses us. Can I get an amen? amen. Anything, whether it's a medical test or surgery, whether it's grief or sorrow, whether it's uncertainty about what the future holds, whether it's about family shame and trauma from the past. We seek to be liberated and free in Jesus' name to be able to proclaim that. That's what Jesus, two chapters later, will tell the disciples. When he tells the disciples in Mark 3, he appoints them and gives them authority. And the word authority, because it's the same word in Mark 1 here, is exercise. So we're called to exercise. So everybody go, everybody put your hand up and go like this and then go like this. You just made a cross. So exercise in the name of Jesus and remember who's claimed you and who holds you, who you are called to proclaim that to others when they're struggles when they're possessed to know that in Jesus name not in my authority we dare not go up against the powers and principalities of this world in our own name or in our own ability but in Jesus name do this one more time exercise in Jesus name we are called to preach the good news that we're forgiven and exercise demons in Jesus' name, we dare not do this on our own. So when we gather for worship, we, we exercise here to be reminded again that we are God's children. We are God's favorite children. Every single one of us. 
called to proclaim that good news to those around us, no matter what's happening out in the world or in our own lives. That in Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Whatever deep in your bowels is possessing you, to be forgiven and set free gives you the authority and exercise to get up and proclaim that to those around us. In Jesus' name, you are forgiven and set free. In Jesus' name. Amen. stand with me as you are comfortable and able as we recite the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God and Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds up your church and love. May all church leaders and teachers honor your instruction and model your inclusive ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, we pray for all creation, 
that waterways flow clean and clear, natural spaces are protected, and our planet is healed. Let us commit to thoughtful care of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, justice-seeking God, we pray for those in government and community leadership. We pray that they lead with honor and mindfulness. May they remember their covenants and be upright in their ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need, especially those who have known rejection, anyone who struggles with long-term illness or chronic pain, those without access to safe housing or health care. We pray especially for Marvin, for Linda, for Malika, and for all those we name now aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Still speaking, God, we pray for our congregation, for the artists and musicians, for the educators and caregivers. We pray that all gifts are used to care for those in need and to live out your example of accompaniment, gospel witness, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember all who have been teachers, mentors, and companions in the church and in our lives. We trust that all who have died are resting in your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the sign of peace with those around you. Peace. At this time, we remember that our offering boxes are located in the back of the sanctuary.
Prayer for communion. If you have your communion, please have it out now. And those of you who are at home as well, please have your communion available as we gather this morning. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please say to one another, The body of Christ. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Please stand as we sing our sending hymn, Thy Holy Gates. peace, God is at work in you. Thanks be to you. Again, our congregational meeting starts at 1030 downstairs online. The Zoom will open at 1015. Uh, guests of Zion are welcome to uh, attend and participate as well. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Yeah, we'll say it twice. <laughs>